Welcome to our lecture online. What we're going to do now is compare the different kinds of galaxies and see how they stack up against one another. So we have the spiral galaxies, we're including the barred spiral galaxies, because besides the central bar of the galaxy, they look fairly well, fairly similar to one another. Then we have the elliptical galaxies and then we have the irregular galaxies. So first of all, size. The Spiral galaxies, by and large, are large galaxies. Our Milky Way galaxy is the spiral galaxy, so is the Andromeda galaxy, and so is M33, which is the galaxy in Triangulum. And those are the three large galaxies of our local group of galaxies. There's roughly 50 or so galaxies in our local group, basically in our neighborhood of galaxies. And the, large, the three largest galaxies are indeed spiral galaxies. So by and large, they are large galaxies. Now we do have small spiral galaxies, but they're very faint, they have very few stars in them, and they really don't fit into this category. So we're going to leave those separate. Then we have what we call elliptical galaxies. Now elliptical galaxies are all over the map as far as size. They go from the very small galaxies that only have a few billion stars in them to enormous galaxies that have trillions of stars. For example, M87 has as many as 10 trillion stars in them, which is 40 times bigger than our Milky Way galaxy. You would need 40 Milky Way galaxies to make up the one M87. Now, irregular galaxies are all typically small galaxies. Our large Magellanic Cloud and our small Magellanic Cloud are all are both irregular galaxies, and they're much, much smaller than the Milky Way galaxy. In our local group of galaxies, besides the three large ellipticals, we have a whole bunch, almost 50, either small ellipticals or small irregular galaxies. What about abundance? Well, it turns out that the spiral galaxies are, of course, the most photographed galaxies because they're the most beautiful, but they're not the most common. We can say that there's about 10 to 15 percent of all the galaxies in the universe are spiral galaxies. That leaves the vast majority, about 90 percent, so that means about 40 to 45 percent of them are ellipticals and about 40 to 45 percent are irregular galaxies. So they make up the vast majority of galaxies. Spiral galaxies are rather rare in comparison. And it's about a 50-50 split between ellipticals and irregulars. What about star formation? Well, it turns out that in spiral galaxies, there's still a lot of star formation. Our Milky Way galaxy is still very busy producing new stars all the time. Elliptical galaxies tend to produce very few to almost no new stars. There's very little star material, very few nebulas from which you can make a star, so therefore there's almost no star formation taking place. In irregulars, the entire galaxy, the entire regular galaxy is still full of all kinds of material, busy making stars, so lots of star formation in irregular galaxies. What about color? Well, it turns out that in the spiral arms you see a lot of blue color, and then towards the center you see a lot of orange to red color. So maybe I should put that down somewhere, so the center the center, where you see the older type stars, we have newer type stars in the R arms. They call them population one stars. And you see a lot of blue stars, which indicates there's still lots of star formation because blue stars don't live very long. And so you can see in the spiral arms, we have a lot of new stars, a lot of population one stars, and it's still very blue in color, where the central portion of the spiral galaxy looks a lot more orange and red. So we need to probably put that down orange and red. And that is where a lot of the older stars exist, so there are a lot of what we call population two stars. And then if we go to elliptical galaxies, they're mostly old stars, so again we see a lot of orange and red in elliptical galaxies. And they're mostly population two stars, very little star formation taking place. And then if we go to irregulars, the whole galaxy has a lot of blue color in them, which means that all over the place are blue stars being formed. They are or in existence, of course, and, and they, uh, they live very short lives, which means they just recently formed. So lots of star formation, lots of blue color in irregular galaxies. And then if we go to the rotation, notice that spiral galaxies tend to rotate on their axis. Our Milky Way galaxy makes about one trip on its own axis in about every 250 million years. Elliptical galaxies, there's very little rotational motion. They're very motionless in the, in the universe. And irregular galaxies also tend to show very little rotation. So the ones that tend to rotate 
are the ones that are the spiral galaxies. And then nebula-wise, so there's lots of nebulas, lots of nebulas in spiral galaxies, but primarily in the arms. In elliptical galaxies, there's virtually no nebulas. And if we go to regular galaxies, there's lots of nebulas all over the galaxy, lots of nebulas. So that gives you a pretty good idea of how they compare to one another, size-wise, abundance-wise, what they look like, whether or not there's star formation or no star formation, the colors of the galaxies, whether or not there's rotation, and whether or not you find nebulas within those galaxies. So that gives you the basic differences between the various types of galaxies. Part of the reason why they look like spiral galaxies is because they rotate, that's right. So it's kind of like a little whirlpool and everything kind of gets swirled around with it, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's Can new galaxies, are new galaxies still forming? The answer probably is no. So there's no new galaxies being formed. Uh, the ones that we have now are the ones that we always will have. Although what we have seen in the past, remember with the quasars, that there's a lot of collisions where two galaxies become one. So that process has been going on, which is probably part of the reason why there's a lot of differences in the way they look. So it could be that spiral galaxies were kind of a result of galaxy collisions more. However, elliptical galaxies are also, there's also big elliptical galaxies and they may have also formed and become big because of collisions. So you can see there's not a clear picture of how these galaxies were formed. Can galaxies split up? They fly together? Can they split apart? No, galaxies do not split up. No, that's... Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they're gravitationally bound. There's no way that you'll pull them apart for, for any reason. Just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> there's no explosion inside or anything? No, no explosions, no splitting up, no collisions. If, the, if collisions happen, they join. They don't split up. Not like a planet getting hit by a big object.